I promise this example is going to be a lot more less mathematically challenging than uh, example number one. I want you to read the description under this football picture. Read that description right now, pause the video, and we're going to continue from there. Okay, you're back. So what this question is describing is a football player, white, he catches a ball and he begins to run. Another football player, Tatum, waits two seconds and then he begins to run toward him to tackle him. And at some point between these two runners, the tackle is going to take place. And actually, I don't know what end of the question it would be closer to. We're just gonna wait and let the math figure that out. Okay, but one of the important parts about this question is that the, uh, the distance between the two runners is 30 meters and it's just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller because they're running toward one another and Tatum waits. He waits, uh, what is it, two seconds. He waits two seconds before he runs, maybe kind of gears which direction he's going to go to catch white and then away he goes. So let's start by making a givens list. Um, white if you notice on your page, is a constant speed object. White is not accelerating, so I only wrote uh, three things for him. A distance, a speed, and a time. And we're gonna fill those in. Tatum is an accelerating runner. So his Gibbons list has a full list here. V1, V2, A, D, and T. The first thing you do is you read the question, you read the very last sentence, and you identify what the given is going to be in this entire problem. And I've done that for you already in most of the questions because of the online learning. It says, how far did Tatum travel? So I typed an X right there for you. Tatum's distance is the unknown in this question, X. That's what we need to solve for. Let's immediately, before even sticking anything else into this solution, let's go over to White's Givens list and tie into that X. If Tatum runs X and they're 30 meters apart, then you know what White's distance is going to be. It's going to be 30 minus X. So right away you've used that condition. There's a link between the distances. Tatum runs distance X, White runs 30 minus X. Let's see what else the question says. White was already in motion and continued forward at a constant speed of three meters a second. So white speed, three meters a second. Tatum hesitated for two seconds before he runs. And then he accelerates head on toward white from rest. So Tatum starts at V1 equals zero. That's always nice. How far did Tatum travel if he slammed into white at 10 meters a second? So that's his final speed. His V2 is 10 meters a second. There's one detail I didn't use, the two seconds of waiting time. So let's tie together the times of these two runners. Uh, Tatum, since that's where unknown X is, let's put the other easy unknown here. Let's say Tatum's time is Y. It's always nice to put the two easiest unknowns with no corrected values in the same formula because that usually gives you a really nice easy substitution. So if Tatum runs for time y and Tatum waited for two seconds, think about this carefully. If Tatum runs for time y and Tatum had to wait for two seconds before he ran, then that means that white is in motion two seconds longer than Tatum. Think about that, really. Think about it very carefully. If Tatum waits, if White starts running and Tatum doesn't, then White is going to be in motion two seconds longer than Tatum. That's the only thing that you're going to do wrong on these questions, if you do anything wrong, is you're probably going to mess up the time. You're going to put a plus sign instead of a negative sign or vice versa. But listen, as soon as you get these variable lists filled in, and you carefully review it and make sure that you're right, you're done the question. Really, the rest of the question is just math details. So what you do is, you start with one object and you, you look at the givens and you write a formula. D equals VT. Fill in whatever you have. 
Distance is 30 minus x. V is 3. And time is y plus 2. You can stop right there if you want to and switch to the other object. Or if you like to clean things up and make it a little easier on yourself, go ahead. I'll foil those brackets out. 30 minus x equals 3y plus 6. And you can continue cleaning that up if you want. You could bring the 30 to the other side, etc. Um, I'm going to hang on for a second and see what happens with Tatum. So let's go over to Tatum's formula. And there's no acceleration in this question. Remember, there's five acceleration formulas, and it doesn't matter which one you use. As soon as you fill in the givens, you're still going to have two equations, two unknowns. So the equation that pops out this time when you look on the sheet is this one. V2 plus V1 times T divided by 2. Let's fill in his givens. Distance, his D is X. V2 plus V1 is 0 plus 10. I'm just going to write that down as, uh, no, I guess I should write down 10 plus 0. 10 plus 0, and remember, don't use any units. Multiplied by time, time is y, and divide by 2. Here's why you put the, the easiest variables on the same object, because you get a nice easy formula. This equals x, x equals 10y divided by 2, x equals 5y. Nice, easy formula. So here are your two formulas. Whoops, sorry, camera's drifting off there. Those are the two formulas, and the answer, substitute the formulas together and solve for x and solve for y. Go with the easiest substitution, and right now you can see if x is 5y, the easiest substitution is to take that 5y, and we're going to put it right in here. So the next line would be 30 minus x, but we're going to make that substitution. So 30 minus 5y equals 3y plus 6. Great. There's no quadratic formula whatsoever. Okay, so we're going to bring things over to different sides and uh, reorganize this. 30 minus 6, 3y plus 5y, and continue solving. 30 minus 6 is uh, 24. 3y plus 5y is 8y, and look at that, no quadratic formula whatsoever, y equals 3. Nice and easy. What was y? You always want to go back to your givens list, because sometimes you're done the question. If I go back to the givens list to make sure I know what y was, y is time, and it's time for Tatum. So, this is 3 seconds. Unfortunately, the question's not done. Sometimes it is. But in this case, it's not done because we want Tatum's distance, not Tatum's time. But just like in math class, take that answer and return to either one of your formulas, whichever one you want. Substitute it in. It can be any one of the formulas. I know at first you say to yourself, no, it can't. I have to sub it into Tatum's formula because we're looking for Tatum's distance. This x and this x, they're exactly the same variable. So it doesn't matter which formula you use, when you solve for x, you're going to get the answer for x. However, Tatum's formula is a heck of a lot easier, glancing at this. I'm not going to make a math mistake with this, so I'm putting it in here. x equals 5y. x equals 5 multiplied by 3. 3 seconds. So x equals 15. And that's our final answer. Tatum runs for 15 meters and catches white. Now that is a, a funny coincidence because the gap was 30 meters wide. It didn't have to be halfway through the gap. That was just a total coincidence of the way the math works out here. The answer is 15, but it's not 15 because it's always the dead center of the, the gap between the runners. That's just how this one worked out. There are three homework questions. What I did for each one of those questions is I wrote out the givens lists on the page. I don't do this during the regular semester, but I thought it would help you slightly in this COVID online learning. I wrote out the givens lists and I already identified with an X what the unknown is that you have to find in each question. So 
go through these practice questions and see what you can do with each one. The solutions, the full written solutions, not just the final answers. The full written solutions for each one of these questions will already be online, so you can check your work as you go. But please, I really, really encourage you not to just use the solutions line by line to figure out what you're doing. You need to make some mistakes. You need to do things wrong in some instances so that you can identify what your mistake would have been rather than just looking at the solutions.